everybody, what's up? First and foremost, this video is not going to be very exciting. It's mostly going to be me talking about seed packets. If at any point I have like some pictures from last year to show you guys of this stuff, I'll show it in the video. But if you're not into these listening to me talk about seed packets for 20 minute videos, this one might not be for you. I'm just giving you a heads up in advance. So it's like this. A question that I've gotten a few times more than once is, hey, I've never grown flowers before. I want to ease into it. I grow a lot of vegetables, but I've never grown flowers. What what can I grow? What's something easy to start out with? And I think this video will accomplish that because all of the seeds in this video are things that I direct sow into the garden. Really, they don't take much special treatment. Some of them take a little bit of special treatment, but for the most part, um, they're pretty much flowers that any beginner can work into their garden if you want to start diving into growing flowers and maybe having a cut flower garden. The first flower up on my list is always scarlet runner beans. And I picked scarlet runner beans because chances are if you already grow a vegetable garden you already grow, you know, beans. And it's pretty much the exact way as you would grow beans to grow runner beans. They are really beautiful. Um, they're really carefree as long as you give them a nice trellis to climb. They are usually pretty happy. You might have a couple problems here and there, but for the most part, uh, they'll just cover your trellis nicely, attract some hummingbirds, which is always a good thing if you have hummingbirds in your area. And overall, I think they're just a really great dual purpose plant. Um, I think they come in a light pink also, kind of like an apricot color or like a bi-color one. I think that one's called Painted Lady. I just usually just grab the red ones because they're easiest to find. Up next in my pile is another no-brainer. These are sunflowers. Sunflowers are a really obvious one if you want to start growing flowers in your garden and you never have before. These have got to be one of the easiest ones to grow. This year I'm growing a variety called Aricara, I guess is how you say it. I've never grown that one before. I think it's branching, but I'm not sure. I got about an ounce of seed for that one because, hey, let's just put sunflowers everywhere. And of course, I'm going to grow the Tall Orange Sun. If you've never seen Tall Orange Sun, I really like this one. They're kind of fuzzy. They branch. Um, they're kind of like the Teddy Bear variety, if you've ever seen that, except for the Teddy Bear variety is really short. And these get about five foot tall, and they bloom for a really long time, which I really like. If you're just looking to add color to your garden, it won't matter if you choose a variety with pollen or one that is pollenless. If you're looking for cut flowers, you might want to consider buying one that's pollenless. Most of those are hybrids. They're a little bit more expensive, but you can find them. Most of them are the Pro Cut series. Me personally, I really love Pro Cut Brilliance. Pollenless flowers are nice because when you pick them and put them in arrangements, they won't dust pollen all over your table. They won't stain things. If you're worried about the bees in your garden, even if you do choose a pollenless sunflower, don't worry because those pollenless sunflowers still produce nectar and nectar can still be collected. So sunflowers are second option. i to move those out of the way. Up next, another one of my all-time favorites, amaranth. Amaranth are so easy to grow and I joke that once you have them, you will always have them. At least that is what has been true in my garden. I planted my first amaranth probably I don't know five years ago and I still get seedlings from it somehow and I just let them grow and I let them go to seed and drop seeds everywhere. I've only got a couple packs of amaranth seeds this year because I do have so many volunteers that come up after I till up the garden and everything. You have some options. There are green varieties, there are orange varieties, of course there are red. Some varieties have all red leaves, some have green leaves. Some are specifically for foliage. There's a lot of different colors in terms of foliage. Some are used for grain. There really are a lot of options. And this is another one that's a great, like, dual purpose plant if you're looking to get the most out of your space. In addition to being edible, if you want to go through the work to harvest the grains and everything, you can also use them in cut flower arrangements and they can look really nice. In general, amaranth are pretty trouble free and even though the bugs will munch on them, they don't seem to be phased by it. There are a lot of different heights for these. There, of course, are the fountain amaranths if you're looking for something a little more, I don't know, different. And you really just have a bunch of choices, so that's another great one. 
Another really good choice for your vegetable slash cutting garden is of course marigolds. There really is a marigold to fit your knee. There's tall ones that can be up to four feet tall. There's dwarf ones that'll stay nice and small to plant in your garden. It really just depends on what you want to do with them. I know a lot of people don't like these for the cut flower garden because they kind of have a funky smell. Let's just be honest, not everybody likes the smell of marigolds. Me personally, I'm not really offended by it. It's just like, you know, whatever you gotta do. But marigolds are another one that are a great choice if you want to interplant them or if you're just looking for a little bit of color and maybe just kind of get your feet wet into growing flowers. All right, so up next I have the Benares Giant Mixed Zinnia. Of course, Zinnias are so easy. I know, I've said this before, but I actually know some people who refuse to grow zinnias because it's like an insult to them or something like, oh, zinnias, anybody can grow that, mm. But zinnias are a really great choice here. I'll tell you why. It's hot here and zinnias seem to like it hot. I actually know some folks who grow their zinnias in a polytunnel because they live a lot further north than me and they just don't have the heat that they need to thrive. But here, zinnias are my jam. I love these things. I only have a little bit of space in the backyard, so I only have a couple packages here. But the thing is, you know, if you want to succession sow zinnias, you can have zinnias all season long. Even if they start to fizzle out a little bit, you can have more. They're cut and come again. You cut these things, they send up more flowers. They get taller and taller. They have pretty much every color except like blue, which is blue is a hard to find color in flowers anyway. In addition to that, you can find pretty much you know, any height. Some I've had them get six foot tall before, or you can find a nice dwarf variety that stays about 12 inches tall. And there really are a lot of options. So I think if you've never grown flowers before, this is another one that is a definite must have for a cutting garden because they will keep cutting and cutting and cutting until, you know, your first frost. Or I do have some issues with powdery mildew. Japanese beetles also like these things, but for the most part, those Japanese beetles don't even phase these as long as the plant is already, you know, pretty established by the time they get here. So this one's definitely on my list. Up next here I have balsam or I think it's impatience, impatience balsamina, I want to say. Don't quote me on that. I might be wrong. I'm probably saying it wrong. You know, I always get tickled people in the comments want to correct people's pronunciation. And fun fact, I have a master's degree in, uh, well, we won't go there. Anyway, um, I think language is really interesting and in how people want to, you know, correct people. But whatever. Balsam, uh, these things self-sew in my yard like crazy, okay? They do seem to be a little bit tolerant of shade, but not so much shade as you would think since it's, you know, in an impatience. They do really, really well in heat and hot weather and they kind of have this kind of tropical vibe to them and it's hard to explain but anyhow i just you know sprinkle these on the soil after frost and they come up it looks great they'll self seed these aren't really a flower that you see very often at least i've never seen them before i grew started growing them and who knows maybe you'll like them too so uh that's another one that can be pretty easy and you might want to give a try it says direct after frost uh that's where i was making my piles for seed sowing Whenever I sow seeds, I do things in piles like direct sow now, direct sow after frost, winter sow now. It just helps me get organized. That doesn't, I don't know. I'm just scatterbrained. Up next, we've got a vine. This is the uh, Mina Lobata, I think it is. Let me, yeah. And you might know it as Love Vine or Spanish Flag is another name for it. I always direct sow these. Uh, I think I soak these in water overnight before I sow them. And nick the seed coat it might be the exact same treatment that i give my morning glories my morning glories are another one uh so i'm going to go ahead and talk about both of these now anyhow these are both really great vines i love vines because you know these i mean they don't really do that great for cut flowers morning glories that's not even a cut flower option they're just more decorative making your garden look nice for me personally. Occasionally I can get some stems long enough from the Spanish flag vines here to use in a flower arrangement, but a lot of the things that I grow, I do kind of just grow them for hummingbirds and butterflies and bees and all kinds of things that I welcome with open arms into my yard. Anyhow, I really love vines because adding a vertical accent to the garden is just, 
it adds a new element of like, wow, this is lush and beautiful. And even if it's a really, really small space, it can make it look like, you know, you've just got so much more going on. So these are two pretty easy ones. Like I said, I just soaked the seeds. Uh, maybe nick the seed coat a little bit if you're unsure. And I think you'll be pretty successful. Next up we have um, Celosia. And now I have multiple packets of Celosia. Uh, this is Forest Fire Celosia. I believe this is one of the, uh, what's it called? It's not, is it the Plume Celosia? There are a lot of different types of Celosia. There is a Spicata. Is it Spicata? I don't know. There's the ones that look like big brains. Anyhow, this is really easy to grow. I always wait till last frost is over. I've worked my bed. I just sprinkle the seeds and usually I've got a lot of plants. And by a lot of plants, I mean I plant these things too close and I should have planned things better, but you know, uh, they do well. And these are actually really great for cut flowers. They add a really cool texture, especially the, I think it's crested, that's the word I was looking for. Um, they have, they look like, kind of like a brain and they come in a lot of different colors, bright reds and pinks and yellows and I think there might be some greens, don't quote me on that, I'm not absolutely sure. Pollinators absolutely, absolutely love these things. Um, there are times when, when I was over the community garden, I had an entire row of these I think it was the forest fire actually and at the time I could not even go in that row because there were so many bumblebees all over the flowers and they were almost borderline territorial acting so you know I had to like wait till it was like dark at night and all the bees had started to kind of you know slow down you know how bees kind of just shut down like their batteries turn off at night Celosia are always a real easy one uh, sometimes they sell so sometimes they don't not really sure about that, why that is, but I definitely will always have this one in the garden and maybe you might like this one too, so. Next up is another vine. This is purple hyacinth bean. Hyacinth beans. This is another vine that I really like because it's a fast climber. Now this is not to be confused with any of the other beans that I was talking about earlier. I'm not sure about the toxicity of this. You'll have to look that up and read up about it. As always, I always say, you know, whenever you're planting flowers or ornamentals into your garden, you really, 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 really need to take the time and do the research and read up and find out about these plants that you're growing. Some of them are toxic, okay? And I always worry about, you know, okay, are there going to be any kids in my garden? Are there going to be any pets eating things that they should not eat? I always like to know what I'm growing and you need to make sure that you're responsible for the things that you're growing. Um, because gardening is supposed to be a good thing. You shouldn't have to worry, you know, when your kids or your pets are out there or anything like that. I know I'm like safety patrol every time I make a video, but, you know, we live in a time where people make videos and they're not an expert. I'm not an expert. Never do anything ever because the internet told you to. I'm just saying. I know it's like I'm your mom or something, but that sounds silly. Like, oh, I saw it on the internet. Like... Don't even get me started. Anyway, back to this, sorry. These hyacinth beans aren't gonna add immediate color to your garden. They're just gonna be foliage for most of the time, actually. But once fall rolls around, you are gonna be so happy to see all these gorgeous purple flowers. And I mean like a legit profusion of purple flowers. And these things are awesome. They look really nice in flower arrangements. The seed pods, once they set seed pods, are gorgeous in flower arrangements. And they look really nice in these fall purple bouquets. And I think they're an awesome cut flower. So maybe you want to grow that one. Alright, getting down to the end here. Are y'all still watching? I can't believe y'all are still watching this. I feel like I've been ranting for like an hour. Who knows how long this video is going to be. Alright, next I have Cosmos. I have Bright Lights Cosmos and Sensation Mix Cosmos. Now, Cosmos are pretty limited. I personally like to have both of them in my garden because they are super nice and they are just super hardy. These are one of the few plants that do really well in my garden. I have a very heavy clay soil and uh, if it rains and then it dries up sometimes the soil turns into uh, the consistency of concrete and it looks terrible and it's awful and I don't know how anything grows into it to be honest but Cosmos don't seem to have a trouble with it at all. And um, for the most part, they'll reseed themselves a lot of times if you let them go to seed. 
When they are in bloom, uh, the plants are really uniform. They all seem to bloom at the same time. It makes me wonder if they're day length sensitive. I honestly don't know. They seem to like a little bit of neglect. Uh, sometimes I plant the cosmos in a spot that's a little, you know, better off in terms of soil health and I'll get huge, green, bushy, gigantic plants and uh, very little blooms. That can be frustrating. So I always tend to throw these in the spot where I don't think anything's going to grow and it seems like they do better when I neglect them. So who knows, right? But if you've never grown flowers and you're looking for one that you can till up a spot, throw the seeds down and see how they do. This is another great one because they'll germinate, they'll grow. Um, you won't have very much trouble for the most part. Occasionally I do have trouble with these. I get aphids on them or if they get really tall, I've had them get six foot tall before and a big windstorm comes and blows them all over. But if you're worried about that, there are a ton of varieties that are dwarf and they'll be about 24 to 36 inches tall and you won't have to worry about that. So it's really just up to you. So if you love purple, this one might be for you. Last but not least, I have cotton. And you can see I've written on this one, uh, winter sow in March. So I'm gonna have to use the winter sow method on these most likely at the end of March because my growing season isn't long enough for cotton. However, if you live somewhere further south and you have a really long growing season, you might be able to direct sow these. For the most part, germination is really easy and really good as long as your soil is nice and warm. Another option if you have a really long growing season is roselle. Um, I always grow those the same time I grow cotton. The thing about cotton, you need to make sure that you're not in a major cotton producing state. I believe there are some kind of regulations about, you know, growing cotton in your home garden. Uh, I think you have to have weevil traps or something set up. So you need to definitely check with your extension if you're thinking about growing cotton and making sure that, you know, you're following all the rules and everything like that. With all of this stuff, especially ornamentals, you always want to do your research and make sure that there's no regulations or laws against what you're growing where you live. For, for example, a lot of plants that I think would be really nice to grow um, are on my invasive species list or on my noxious weeds list. So I'm not going to go out and get seeds for stuff that's going to be invasive and cause a problem. That's about it for now. Um, there are some other things that you can direct sow and use in the cut flower garden. For example, I plant a lot of okra and I use okra pods in flower arrangements and sometimes they look really nice. That's another way. You know, the whole dual purpose. I can eat it. I can use it in flower arrangements. I can just enjoy the flowers. The main thing I think about planting your first cut flower garden is to just keep an open mind and be inventive. You can be a total novice and you can come up with something really beautiful and you can be proud of it and I think that's awesome. So if y'all have any questions let me know in the comments. There is a new podcast up on SoundCloud. I'll put the link down in the description. You can go click on that if you're interested. Uh, if you like this video please subscribe because I would absolutely love to have you. If you didn't like this video, I mean, that's fine too. I hope you're having a real good day anyway. That's alright. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.